Okay, hi again. Um, for this video we're going to be focusing on mass number and isotopes, which is part of the module 1 for AS Chemistry AQA. So first we need to be able to recall the meaning of mass number and atomic proton number. So if we represent an element by x, the um, proton number z always goes on the bottom. And um, this is basically the number of protons. But you've also got to remember that the number of protons identifies the element. And that all atoms of the same element will have the same number of protons. Okay, and then we move on to the mass number, which is on the top, and that is represented by the symbol A. And this is simply just defined as the sum of protons and neutrons. So if we just recap on these numbers from like GCSE, we have CL3517, 17. 17 is the number of protons and the protons and the electrons are equal so there's um, the same number of those. And then obviously the mass number is how we work out the number of neutrons so that's 35 minus our 17 protons will give us our number of neutrons. So if we work that out, there's 18 neutrons. And that's just simple, um, you know, sums to do with, and you need to know all of that, like the back of your hand. Okay, so now we move on to isotopes. And basically, isotopes are atoms of an element that have different number of neutrons. So obviously they have the same number of protons because that's what defines the element and different number of neutrons. Because they have the same number of protons, that means they have the same number of electrons, therefore they're going to react in the same way. And this is due to their electron configuration, which is definitely a key word to use in the exam. Just going to put config there. Right. Um, however, they vary in physical properties like mass because they have different numbers of neutrons which hold a unit of charge. Therefore, they also vary in properties like densities. And these are all physical properties. The chemical properties are the same because of their electron configuration. Um, so an example of an isotope is just chlorine, which has two isotopes, one with um, a mass number of 35 and one with a mass number of 37. So therefore it's going to have different numbers of neutrons. Okay, so now we're on the mass spectrometer. And basically in this there's four main stages and it's just a case of learning them. First of all, a vaporized sample goes in and it always has to be vaporized. Make sure that you know that. So the first stage, ionization. And basically what happens at this stage is the vaporized particles are bombarded by high energy electrons, fired by an electron gun, and this knocks off electrons off the atom and therefore it becomes a positively charged ion. So, um, and just basically a key word to remember there is electron gun. Um, so the next stage is acceleration and basically what happens at this stage is the positive ions are attracted towards a negatively charged plate um, and some of the plates have slits in so 
Some of the ions pass through the slits, which forms a beam-like formation. What to remember here is electric field, field, and the negatively charged plates. Okay, the next part is deflection, and this happens in this bit, and this is because the electromagnet. And basically, the path of the ions is altered by the magnetic field. And um, the lighter ions have less momentum, therefore they can be deflected easier. So that's all to do with the mz ratio, which is the mass to um, charge ratio. So if they're um, higher in mass, then it's harder to deflect them. The final stage is just the detection and basically what happens here is the electric current is measured as the ions land on the plate and the relative abundance is calculated um, and it's obviously produced on a um, mass spectrometer graph and that's how we work out relative isotopic abundance and so forth. Okay, so now we move on to the mass um, spectrometer graph. And basically, it looks something like this when it comes out. It'll be mass along the bottom and abundance up the side, and that is measured in percentage. Um, and let's take neon, for example, has two isotopes, one at mass 20 and one at mass 22, carrying it 10 and 90%. So it would just have two peaks like that, representing the isotopes. And from this graph, we can um, calculate the relative atomic mass of an element. For example, um, neon here, there's like an equation that we can filter it into. So it's just abundance times the mass of isotope plus the abundance times the mass of isotope divided by 100. So if we do here, uh, 20 times by 90, 90, plus our 22 times by 10, and then we divide it by the total 100%, will give us our um, relative atomic mass, of neon which equals the sum of that which is 20.2 and this is how we use the mass spectrometer to identify unidentified elements for example we don't have to know that this is of neon but if we look at 20.2 um, as a um, mass number on the um, periodic table we'll be able to find it and it is neon so therefore we don't need to know that it's neon we can look for on the periodic table and it's great because we can use this to identify elements it also says on the specification that an example of how mass spectrometers were used is in the planetary space probe which was um, used to find out what the Martin atmosphere was like and made of. So next you can also work out the relative molecular mass of a molecule that's inserted into the mass spectrometer. This is a bit different because um, it will be covered more on module 2 because we learn about fragmentation. But um, basically, as it enters into the mass spectrometer, it gets um, fragmented, but the highest peak and the one furthest to the right will always be the um, ion that holds the mass of the um, molecule. So whatever the digit is here will be the mass of that. For example, if that was 30, then the um, relative atomic mass of this molecule would be 30. And obviously we will cover that in more depth later. Okay, that's the end of the video for now. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter. It's at chem underscore AQA. Or um, just leave a comment. I'll see you in the next video.